Hello friends, welcome back to another video of AutomationTestingInside.com So today I'm going to talk about a spiral model so In the last two videos we talked about waterfall model and iterative model So if you have not watched those videos then please uh, I would recommend please watch those videos and come back to this video because until unless if you don't understand like what is waterfall model and what is iterative model you cannot understand a spiral model So it's important to uh, go and watch those videos so I have given the link in the description box of this video, the complete playlist uh, link. You can go and watch those videos and come back to this video. Now let's talk about what is spiral model. So we have seen there are some drawbacks in waterfall model and iterative model. So to overcome all those drawbacks, here we go for spiral model. So what do you mean by spiral model? So spiral model is the combination of waterfall model and iterative model. Okay, so let me take you to my PPT where we can understand better with the representation of a spiral model and we'll see some uh, notes about spiral model and pros and cons as well. So let me take you to my PPT and understand better like what is a spiral model. So guys, uh, as we have discussed at the beginning of this video, like a spiral model is the combination of waterfall model and iterative development approach, iterative model. So let's talk about some of the points about a spiral model so you can make a note of it and in the next slide i'll show you with the help of diagram we'll understand better like what is the spiral model so let's get started so it is incremental development approach it is incremental development approach so you have seen in iterative development approach like we we used to develop the product based on uh, based on the requirements like we prioritize the requirement and we develop module wise module one module two like that so that's why it is called incremental development approach the project is developed phase by phase phase by phase the new requirements are integrated to the existing application so as i have discussed like module one we have certain requirements and then in module two we'll add some more requirements and so on the requirements are prioritized based on business requirements this is a risk driven software development process model so as i have discussed like this is the combination of waterfall model and iterative development model but there is an extra factor like risk analysis so it's risk uh, there is a, a high percentage of risk analysis in a spiral model so it is also called like risk driven software development process model so it is suitable for large and complex projects this spiral model is the combination of iterative development, iterative development process model and sequential linear development model that is waterfall model with a very high risk, high emphasis on risk analysis. So this is uh, there, these are the some notes about a spiral model. Now let's talk about in detail like what is a spiral model uh, with the help of diagram. So there are four phases. Uh, uh, in a spiral model so first phase is planning we have first phase is planning and then we have risk analysis Third would be coding and testing. Or you can call it as engineering as well. Engineering or you may call it as implementation. Implementation. Or so the third phase you can call it as uh, coding and testing or engineering or implementation and the fourth one would be evaluation evaluation so evaluation is done by uh, uh, by customers they'll provide the feedback 
so let's start with the planning phase so yeah it starts from here so suppose we are, we have we got some requirements from client and uh, in this particular phase planning phase what happens is ba works with customer to get the requirement and uh, with the help of project manager they uh, they used to estimate the project and do the complete uh, the planning of the project so let's say we have divided our uh, requirements into different uh, modules so right now we are working on module 1 this is module 1 so this phase will start like this now we need to do risk analysis for the module 1 so we'll do risk analysis over here so first of all we need to understand like what is risk so risk is the positive possibility of something bad happening and uh, you can say like uh, it, it involves uncertainty uh, events like it may or may not happen in the future so there are certain phases in risk like certain steps to uh, resolve the risk like we have identification of the risk evaluation prioritization of the risk and uh, there could be different uh, project related risk like scope related risk and uh, cost related uh, we have schedule related as well and lack of clarity in the requirements uh, resources uh, unavailability so these are the different risks uh, we have cost related means if cost is the at uh, higher side so that will be a risk so we'll do all kind of risk analysis in this particular phase so do not worry about guys like risk because risk analysis is a separate uh, topic we can discuss later on so for now you can understand like uh, these are the different risks like uh, whatever i have talked about related to project so we'll do all kind of analysis over here so risk analysis for module one is done now coding and coding and testing will be done in over here so whatever rock, uh, requirements we got we'll do the coding developer will do the coding and they will implement the coding and then uh, uh, they'll send it to testing team for testing that particular module so we'll do the testing of module one over here after successful uh, one successfully uh, tested uh, module one then we'll go for the release and we'll do the release over here So model one will be released over here and based on customer reviews and feedback reviews and feedback we'll work upon module two so we'll we may add uh, some more requirements uh, we can change the requirements from module one we can update the requirements uh, of module one and we'll work with the new requirements uh, from module two and then we'll start module two over here and then same process will go like this planning phase again we'll do uh, the planning for uh, module 2 and the same thing like risk analysis for module 2 will be done over here and then coding of module 2 and developer will integrate module 2 with module 1 and we'll do integration testing of module 1 plus module 2 over here and we'll do regression regression for module one so we'll make sure that uh, the changes like changes of module two does not affect the module one so that's the reason we do the integration uh, in regression testing over here do not worry about different testing like integration or regression testing we'll discuss in coming videos so once testing and everything is done for module two and then we'll deploy module 1 and 2 over here module 2 1 and 2 integrated and we deployed successfully and we'll will work for module 3 over here so this is how we'll keep working on module wise so let's say this is module module 3 now again the same process will start planning of the uh, module 3 and then we'll uh, do the risk analysis for module 3 module 3 and then again we'll uh, integrate we'll do the the developer will integrate module 1 
one and two with model three and we'll do the integration testing between uh, among model one two and three and then we'll do the regression testing like model one and model two does not get impacted and so on this process will go so this is a spiral model guys so this is the combination of like iteration like iteration is there you can see here like we have uh, iteration is nothing but uh, repeatable things so we are keep repeat, repeating the same phases like planning risk analysis uh, coding and testing and evaluation we have four phases over here so we are keep repeating uh, keep repeating all these phases so that is iteration in a spiral model and incremental is nothing but we we are adding module 1 with module 2 and module 3 so this is how we are developing the software so this is about uh, about a spiral model now next next uh, we'll discuss like when to use a spiral model so when requirement is when deliverance is required to be frequent so we'll get when when we get the frequent requirements from the customer so we should go for spiral model when project is large of course and when requirements are unclear and complex so we can go for a spiral model because uh, in this particular model there is high risk analysis so we can take the requirements in the middle as well so what are the different advantages of a spiral model the requirement are prioritized based on the business requirement so that is the advantage we have we can prioritize our requirements like from uh, whatever requirements we uh, got from the customer we can prioritize them and we can work upon those requirements it is suitable for large and complex projects there are some disadvantages of a spiral model like can be a costly model to use because uh, as i have discussed earlier like we have to do high level of risk analysis so uh, it could be a costly model risk analysis needed highly particular expertise doesn't work well for smaller projects so in smaller projects we cannot afford the high cost so it, it won't work for smaller projects so this is all about a spiral model guys so in case if you have any questions or anything uh, please comment it and please like and share this video and please subscribe to this channel and click the bell icon to get the notification for upcoming videos thank you so much have a nice day bye bye